Hello. Um, this painting I, I finished yesterday. Um, I worked on it for five to six months. I started it in the summer and I it changed a lot. It constantly kept changing and changing. I thought of many different titles. Um, thought of calling it Improvisation, um, Inner Song, Process. And then in the end I, I decided on the title Heartbeat. Um, not heartbeats, but a heartbeat, uh, a single moment in time where you, where things stop, where you sit and contemplate, where you take a moment just to, to breathe and, and feel your insides and your lungs and your arms opening up. I was thinking about many different artists while while doing this painting. I was thinking about um, William de Kooning's landscape paintings and and how he had this freedom to express himself and just be so organic and and where things just release themselves or or how Jackson Pollock would his fingers would float around and the paint would drip and move and it would just this soft tender rage application of this you know I was thinking about his work and how he his complete sense of freedom and and unfortunately I, I couldn't really get that sense of freedom I I maybe I feel unable to to be that free I so much of the time you you feel like a I feel like a kite blowing in the wind not really knowing where 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 what direction I'm going in or and you you get lost in in your mind and in your process and you're trying to to explore new things and push things and things get muddy and things kind of get more cleaned up as it goes I would I started relating a bit more to uh, Mark Rothko and Sean Scully's work of how distilled and how they or or Barrett Newman's voice of fire I I think of the voice of fire and I think of the color red and I you know as an artist I have a a relationship with each color I red represents this kind of inner heat this determination this passion this this boiling blood this fire inside a, a stove or a forest fire inside your mind and I think of birth and blood and suicide and death and murder and love and kissing and bleeding and passion and so many things with the color red I just this but I think you get the essence of it it's, so I while working on this painting I would sit in a chair and I would sit in front of it and close my eyes and let the let the colors inside of me kind of center themselves and I would find myself breathing and listening to that kind of landscape inside of my soul and so I I did this painting and it it is it I put like a fence uh, a, her, a base at the bottom where it kind of represents like a, a landscape horizon line and then the center of it is kind of 
this opening of like a sky or uh, your two lungs opening and ex inhaling and exhaling like balloons and how your your soul is expanding and how your mind is feeling light and so you can enter into the painting you can walk into the painting where there's you have this sense of placement like your head is almost the portrait inside you can you can put yourself in there rather than the painting pushing out and and not a, giving you an entry point into it you know a painting is two dimensional it 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 is a flat surface it's not a sculpture it's you know even lines of perspective and and other things you still you don't walk into the painting it it, it is a flat surface and really I was thinking about uh, Gerhard Richter a lot and how he was using these large instruments to kind of apply and remove paint and so I started using large drywall instruments and kept destroying and adding and trying to I use the many paint brushes um, and the color red there's there's scarlet lake there's magenta there's alizarin crimson there's cadmium red there's you know many different kinds of reds in there just to kind of give a variation kind of like a a freckle so it kind of shimmers so it kind of pulsates on the so your eyes can keep moving so it, it the painting isn't um, flat like a, a wall in a living room or in a hallway you know the painting is more living in sense that it has a uh, you know has that those different little things happening even in, in one space I was also thinking about um, Robin and Robin Lynch um, or Ro Foxy Robin on Facebook she was an intern at the gallery and um, beautiful human being uh, very inspired by her her artistic view on life and she did this performance work in the gallery of, over a year ago um, where she was all clean and had white clothes white things on and she put out a blank cotton canvas and started scrubbing herself with red paint and obsessively compulsively kind of cleaning herself and washing herself and then being consumed in red paint um, I often think about how I the color red and another day uh, thinking inside your mind how white is like white for me is always like a bleached mind like a purity like a calmness um, yellow is like sunshine uh, a sense of light and hope you know a painting should have positive and negative spaces for me so that there's kind of a tension between everything so that there's kind of a relationship of a dynamics of something and you know while there isn't light and dark or shadows there's there's dark and light so it's um, kind of night and day in a painting kind of like how Jim Morrison goes over and you know the day just what is it night divides oh I forget uh, the day destroys no uh, Day destroys, oh fuck, I'm making a mess of it. Anyways, I'm not thinking that way. Uh, but the night divides the day, day destroys the night, something like that. So, kind of the rib cages or, or things on the left and right are kind of migrating towards the middle. Or or washing or eroding away it's kind of up to you there's that kind of 
the icicles, the, the light blue is put on there, the paint in the winter, it's cold now, it's, it, the, wind, the studio is not heated, and the paint becomes more like molasses, like elastic, like spaghetti, and so I get these interesting effects. Um, and in the summer, the paint is very easy to put on these glazes and you get these beautiful glazes that are very smooth and but the the paint has these extra kind of qualities that that I love playing with you know when it when the paint becomes more stiff and so I use palette knife in that um, over the last year the uh, many things have happened in my personal life uh, at a risk of oversharing or not but just really wishing to share with you and communicate the um, you know I I was in a 17 year relationship with Erica and we we got separated a, a l over a year ago and we're going through a divorce um, actually very soon uh, that will all be done and so that was that's 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 one thing and then the uh, the city of Ottawa uh, they're closed I, I had an art gallery and it was out of my home and there was about 300 paintings in on exhibition and had about 45 to 50 artists that were I was showing and that were sculptors and painters and then there was dancers and poets and bands and photographers so many people and really the the art openings became so big that I had to have two a month because you couldn't see the artwork there was too many people attending the openings it was kind of insane so I started having two openings a month, but still the attendance was still three to five hundred plus people. And um, so it, the city deemed my home as um, a museum and or a cultural center. So it failed to meet the zoning residential uh, code. And so I, I was forced to close the gallery. Um, I, I didn't anticipate the gallery becoming so successful, so it kind of blindsided me. Um, I wanted the gallery to not just be a, a space where paintings were hung and people purchased things like a retail space, but I wanted it to be a, a place where activity happened and and art was alive and shared and celebrated amongst people and and so I, I worked on that very very hard for about five years developing the gallery and it, it became very successful in fact unfortunately um, it, that was the pitfall was that it was too successful in the end and too many people were coming and so this year over the summer on July or June 17th or 21st I was told at City Hall that the gallery is shut and I so this year has been pretty tough over the last six months or seven months I the gallery closed which meant I lost my source of income because I haven't had a job uh, I work I think there's a difference between working and I work every day and I I paint and I I make art but I, I haven't had a traditional job where I go to an employer but for the last 15 years I've lived off my my painting and so when the gallery shut that I had this huge house um, that I <laughs> it was useless to me really as a uh, it was just a, a traditional home and um, so I, I had to convert the house into a duplex so I could afford to live there and find all the money and 
to build a bathroom and a, buy appliances and put in a kitchen and build walls and destroy walls and that was um, that took I was doing while working on this painting I was also doing that um, and so this painting I just kept reworking and reworking and so I, I would just start dreaming about it and thinking about it and consuming about it all the time this particular work of art and uh, so it was of um, I feel very satisfied looking at it right now and I'll show you up close some of the things of what I was hoping. Here's where the paint's a little bit more, um, these things happen because it's colder. You can see the, the, the depth and the texture and the kind of beveling of things. You can see how the paint just works and keeps developing. Put so much paint on it, it that even on the sides it it spills off the canvas and off to the sides. That one's titled Heartbeats, and then you can see a bit of the, the studio floor and the workspace or a little shithole. <laughs> Anyways, well, that's another day. Here's another painting that I also did. Well, at the same time, I'll finish that also recently. Thank you.